Remember about three months ago I got this half wheel of rat clad? I've been trying to use it in all my videos, but it's truly never ending. Even though it's the stinkiest food and second stinkiest thing I've ever put in my mouth. But as always, the story ends with me falling in love. Unfortunately, this is all we have left, a tiny piece of unusable rind. But since it's become my favorite cheese of all time and the second main character on this channel, I'm gonna let its appearance continue down the road. They even gave us nutritional labels, just in case we resell the individual pieces. Nobody knows I'm planning to eat this whole thing by myself. Oh, God. 12 pounds of cheese, it's like me when I was born. Also, I realized the last raclette came from France, and this one is definitely Swiss. The word raclette means to scrape. It's a semi-hard, so just like me, melting cheese originated in the Swiss Alps. It's a tradition shared by a lot of cultures around that area. Based on my half-assed research, French raclette is harder, stinkier, and more intense in flavor. The Swiss one is more authentic, softer, so better for melting, more mild and fruitier in flavor. So let's get started with our wheel. First thing, I'm really confused by this label. It's really hard to take off because it crumbles when you touch it. Are you supposed to keep it on there? This is kind of an annoying process. Somebody Swiss, please answer in the comments. Now I'm understanding the true meaning of raclette. It's not to scrape the cheese, but to scrape the label. To deal with our wheel, I even got these stainless steel wire cutters. I'm going above and beyond so much lately because, you know, it's the holidays. It's kind of hard to operate on a flat surface. There's like no more room left to pull after you hit the table. Once the two handles reach the bottom, we can just flip it over and follow all the way through. Just move your hands together it will naturally cut in a straight line. Definitely felt a lot softer than the French ones. It's more pale in color and has a lot more of these little holes throughout. And before we start cooking with it, let's talk about the machine we got last time. It was rated less than 3 stars on Amazon, but I still got it because it kind of saves space with all this folding. But the problem is that there's no heater in the middle, so all the heat gets concentrated at these two corners. So as a result, the middle doesn't get cooked and the two sides burn. So to solve the problem, I got a new machine. This, instead of rating 2.5 stars on Amazon, is 3 stars. As you can see here, the heating rod is one whole piece. This will help us melt the cheese evenly on the surface, although the last machine didn't require us to assemble anything. It's basically just making sure you're putting the right type of screws into the right type of holes. It looks like this golden rod is what's going to support the whole weight of the cheese. To adjust the height of the platform, you're going to have to spin it a lot. Once it's in place, we'll put the cheese on top. I'm wearing a glove because I just cut myself spinning it. And finally, we'll screw in this little edge to keep the cheese secured. Our first recipe is going to be a traditional Swiss family style raclette platter. Consisting of cornichons, aka pickles that makes me feel better about myself, and some type of cured meat. I'm going with this serrano chorizo Spanish platter type of thing. It's a variety of meat so we can arrange it nicely like a charcuterie board. Making a charcuterie board is just like doing your hair. You have to put a lot of effort and thoughts into it, but you want to make it look spontaneous as if things just fall into place. I also read online that Swiss people eat raclette with boiled meat sometimes, so we'll honor their tradition by eating it with a piece of boiled radioactive chicken breast. Honestly, this is starting to look like a really balanced diet. At least for me. Last but not least, the most important part about raclette is boiled potatoes. You got some salt, acidity, protein, and carbs. Now we just gotta put cheese on it to make it taste instantly better. Looking a little tilted, so we're going to use the old piece of raclette to leverage it. This machine melts so much better than the last one, the side got all sweaty and drippy like this. Look how evenly it roasted it. A nice thick layer of melted cheese on top. It all bubbled up to golden brown. I think it got a little crispy too. Now for this money shot, I'm gonna be completely quiet.
The plate looks a little messy, but that was definitely one of the most satisfying scenes ever filmed on this channel. Now I'll take a little bit of potato, chicken, cover it up with the cheese, give it a taste, and rate it 1 through 10. I'm just gonna use my hands because I like playing with my food. It's such a great eating experience because every bite you take off the plate, you can chase it down with some cheese. Also demonstrate how powerful it is because it makes bland boiled potatoes and chicken breast taste so much better. It's more mild, lighter, and less salty than the French one, which makes it pair better with the salty cured meat and the pickles. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10, and I'm not gonna judge how it looks, so you shouldn't judge how I eat. There's a restaurant in East Village called Raclette that's famous for their burgers. Starting with some off-colored radioactive ground beef, shape into balls by rubbing it a lot. Heat your skillet up really hot and then spray in oil. Put the meat in there and smash it as hard as you can. And then just season it with salt and pepper. And you can just take them out whenever you want. Then, as always, we have to toast our classic American burger buns. When we're waiting for the cheese to melt, we'll prepare the toppings. We're gonna use some sliced kumeto. It's not a radioactive tomato. It's just a kumeto. The inside is still nice and pink, though. This time, the spot burning problem is happening again. But I think it's because the heater is tilted. A layer of I give us a second chance to QP mayo. Some kumatos that we make sure to season with salt. The patties. And finally, cheese. It's looking very good, the golden part, and I like how the cheese is dripping down the middle. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it like Stockton. Meat to cheese ratio is pretty much 50-50, which is the only way to go. So let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I feel like usually American cheese and cheddar is too powerful for a burger. This raclette is mild enough that you can still taste the flavor of the meat, which is pretty horrible. But I think if I did a better job with the bun and the patty, this would be perfect. The best part is that you can add as much cheese as possible and it will still be the meat that dominates my mouth. But I'm gonna have to give this a 5 out of 10. Our last recipe doesn't require any melting, so we'll take the other half of the wheel and cut it into smaller pieces. I found that it's way easier if you make it halfway and pull on the handle together with one hand to make the final cut. To be honest, right now I really feel like an artisanal cheesemaker. Should I start making and selling my own raclette? Let me know in the comments. Maybe it'll do better than my merch. Oh, by the way, you should get one. Link in the description. For this recipe, we're using 8 ounces of cheese. The original recipe called for monster, but I feel like raclette would work better for it. We'll cut the cheese into small cubes. Other than that, you need some milk, heavy cream, thyme, bay leaf, and some flour. First, we'll make a roux with 2 tablespoons of flour and 2 tablespoons of butter. Mix it together with a ligma fork. We want to cook the flour a little bit to get rid of the raw taste. When it's just lightly yellow, it has become a blonde roux. Even though it might ask you for pumpkin spice latte, you're just going to slowly whisk in some milk. Actually, we're doing a cup of heavy cream and a cup of milk. Make sure you add the liquid gradually and continuously whisk to minimize lumps. With the heat at its lowest, we'll put in 8 ounces of raclette, some thyme, bay leaves, 2 dashes of truffle powder, and some garlic powder. Once the cheese is almost melted, you want to turn off the heat, otherwise the bottom might stick. At this point, the herbs should have had enough time to infuse into the sauce. Take them out and give it a final season with salt and pepper. We boiled 8 ounces of dry rigatoni off camera and dumped all of it in. And here's some sounds for you. Ideally, you want to use panko, but I only have breadcrumbs. Now into the oven on broil at 425 till whenever it's golden. Also sprinkle some parsley on top, we'll wait a little bit so that it doesn't destroy my tongue. Definitely passes the sound check, now let's grab a centerpiece, give it a taste, and rate it 1 through 10.
You know how usually mac and cheese gets really mushy and it's pretty much all sauce? But the rigatoni, such a big tube, not only stayed hard throughout the cooking process, but also delivered the white creamy sauce into my mouth really efficiently. So overall, the layers of texture really stand out. The flavor, on the other hand, is a little bland. I don't think the mild nature of raclette is powerful, pungent, and sharp enough to carry a bowl of pasta. Mac and cheese tastes way better with stronger ones like cheddar, pepper jack, and monster. But overall, I think this is a good recipe to base your mac and cheese off of. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. The story of the never-ending raclette continues. And check out my fridge. The half wheel of French raclette lasted us 3 months. With this logic, we're gonna be stuck with this for the next half year. Which I'm definitely not complaining. I'm just thankful that my roommate and I are not lactose intolerant. With that being said, Thanksgiving is over. We have a little more than a month left in 2023. Let's finish the year strong and hopefully make some positive changes next year. Alright, thank you. Thank you.